Owen, we're Yay. live. Guys, I am live on the captain's log with Dolph Ziggler. Do you always go by Dolph no matter what? Uh, it depends. Uh, if I'm checking into a hotel, he's a fake name. You do? Uh, well, just you like, like, like Ziggler Dolph? An hourly one. Yeah. 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 At Brent, sometimes. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. Like a show in Arizona, this guy comes up and he goes, <laughs> Oh, big fan. Brent, right? <laughs> that was the and best like, thing that's uh, ever happened to me. Find my phone. He's uh, Brent. Brent's a good. That's a good way to the go. The guy went up and it was like she made it a little quicker. He gushed about stats and oh, yeah, things yeah. that he knew and I titles. Oh, he goes, I'm a big fan, Brent. Right? <laughs> <That's the greatest laughs> Did he have the stats right? Uh, he know he had everything. He had, he had everything, he knew, everything right. He knew what it was, and he just called me Brent. And I, there's not even like a wrestling guy named Brent. Yeah. I don't know. Oh. Where Brent? Is Maybe he about. wanted like Brett. <laughs> but even Brett then, Hart, right? even I don't then, know. I don't look like Brett, but yeah. he distinctly said Brent, and yeah. that's the funniest thing that I've ever remembered from a fan. <laughs> that's great. That's great. <laughs> Brent, so, right? literally, you just told me you were five and you decided you want to be a wrestler. Yeah. But the difference was is that you obviously were wrestling not WWE style. Yeah. You started like doing regular Roman Greek, what is it, Greco? Well, we, we Actually, say amateur, which sucks because it's like, right. it's way cooler than like an amateur sign. That just means you're not getting paid. But yeah, Greco Roman freestyle and collegiate style. That's a, so that's, I, I was a big fan and I wanted to start wrestling and I walked into the first ever tournament and there was no ring, no ropes. And I was yeah. like, what the hell is this? So it's, you know, just collegiate style wrestling. It's very different. And then, and then, and you actually wrestled all through college. You were a yep. re college wrestler, that, which yeah. is super cool. Five years old through college, and then uh, I mean, I, uh, while waiting to get a tryout, I had a couple little odd jobs, but I've been mean, basically been doing this my whole life. All right, so fast forward, you get the tryout because that's interesting. Like, how did you literally get to get the tryout? So I'm a much smaller guy for my business at the time. This is 15 years ago, and. Uh, they were just about the time where they had a rule where anyone under 6'2 didn't even get a tryout or anything. So um, I went to a pretty prestigious wrestling high school and um, through that, through our coaches and our coaching staff and having uh, connections just to shake hands with somebody at WWE because uh, Gerald Briscoe is a Oklahoma State guy and uh, he was our behind the scenes guy. He was a real tough what we call a shooter in the business and right. you know he's a real wrestler but also behind the scenes and in the ring he was a tough guy too so he was one of those guys who had the credentials to back up what he did and he worked through WWE and I met him through uh, a coach of mine through St. Ed's and uh, I just got to shake hands and come watch a show and I, you know talk to someone for about five minutes and told them you know how much I loved it and what I was doing they said hey keep doing what you're doing you know when you graduate you know maybe we'll give you a call or something and uh, did you think that that was a real well, uh, they I go, blew you off, but that was, was a real deal. They gave us tickets and you know talked to me for a few minutes. I go, you know what? I, I, I felt like it was real because like there was a real connection with uh, you know looking for some people in this reality era who actually had the credentials to back stuff up. So no matter how yeah. small I was, um, you know if I loved what I was doing and dedicated myself to this like I did with amateur wrestling, that they'd be happy to have me. But who knows? You know, so I had a tryout with a much much bigger guy really and they went they went with him and said you know we'll, we'll we'll talk to you some other time and another eight months went by or so and i had one more tryout with them and i had worked so hard trying to figure out it without being in wrestling training just yeah. on my own and just from being a fan that helped me like acclimate to it much uh, quicker than everybody else so i had another trial with a handful of guys and I was getting up quicker and naturally going into motions quicker and just picking it up. Like, because, what did they make you do? Like, jump off picnic so, tables? No, like, drop elbows? No, How I, do you try out but, for the WWE? You, you, you fall, you fall <laughs> I mean, down right? and get back up and fall down and get back up. And a lot of it is just having endurance and stamina, period, because you're doing all these workouts and they you know, they want to weed out people who are, aren't seriously in shape. And who know? aren't athletic, right? Because yeah. you got to be ath athletic you as really hell. Do, no matter what you look like or what you do, you have to be able to be athletic because everyone Just because guys are muscular men and women doesn't and, mean they're, they can move. I mean, yeah. some guys are really stiff, right? They're actually, they, a lot of times, it's you know, it's the opposite. They're very stiff, and they got to loosen up, or you got to be the loose guy who may, you know yeah. has them around. So I was in there with a few people who kind of were fans, but you know, casual. I just you know, they they wanted to try it, and they tried it, and I stood out because of the group I was with wasn't uh, you know as athletic as myself. So it, like, where do you go to better. get that tryout? Uh, I went down to Walmart, probably. Yes, yeah. it's a parking <laughs> like lot. Is it Walmart. the cave? 
<laughs> yeah, well, it's a super K, so it's a, it's a little oh, fancy. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's real fancy. Mm. I wore like a collared shirt. Sarah Tiana, by the way, is also our guest <laughs> back there. Hi, Sarah. Hi. And she's going to be performing tonight with Dolph at Off yeah. the Hook Comedy Club. Yes. There's a show uh, at 7 o'clock, and you can get tickets at offthehookcomedy.com. Uh, we're on the captain's log right now. So we're talking about uh, you coming up and your tryout. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, at the time, there wasn't like, you couldn't, e could you email people or was uh, it? Oh man, was there emails? I re no, I got well, a, when you I got started, a call. You were calling, right? But yeah, but Electricity I mean. Electricity wasn't yeah. there. Right? There was like a crank you turned, <laughs> but yeah. it yeah. was. Uh, yeah, a little other. hamster used to run next to the ring, yes. I think, right? They had emails and things, but it was all like on a phone and like a non-cell phone, like my parents family phone i got a phone call to okay like cut. i had a message and to go hotmail yes happening. i wish and yeah, after AOL. you did the tryout wait so so first eight months uh before yeah. you didn't make it because it was a monster guy yeah then what did you do like what was your well, training between him, the eight but, months yeah. in that time i mean like you're wrestling but a lot of moves that you guys do are not moves that you learned that you were doing right. in college. Yeah. I mean, these are athletic, like acrobatic moves, rather yeah. than like, right? And, and you have to know how to do them. And I did not know. That's how what I'm to saying. Do it. So, what did trained. you do? Go to like the circus? How did so, you train in those eight months? What I did was I I read Mick Foley's book. Oh, I, I met Mick Foley. Yeah, he uh, was throwing himself, jumping over the hood of his car, and landing on his back in his front yard. And, uh, is that how you train? training? So I tried that, <laughs> uh, just trying to toughen up my back. Did? And I was like, man, this is gonna make me so much better. Yeah. And it eventually just I had like these golf ball sweatless swellings all down my back, and I went to the tryout. But I, when we did all fall down, and you don't know what you're doing or how to fall or catch yourself or anything, I was jumping right back up, and the other people were kind of slow to get up. Trying and to figure it, out. It yeah. really made me stand out. Really? So, yeah. And that that was part of it. And like I said, being a fan. He's so like, guys, oh, don't jump like on before. your back no, off the top ring, and it's not going to make you any better. Nope. But this is actually how he did it. <laughs> yeah, don't try this at home, even though I did. Kind of crushed it. Wow. Yeah. So then you, so you got back, and they were like, "This guy's like a gazelle. He moves. He's quick. He's athletic." And I have those dancers' legs like a yeah. gazelle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but no, I, yeah, they, they knew that I was a fan, a longtime fan, and that. I had dedicated myself to wrestling and I was going to do it again and uh, they took a chance on me because um, I want to say about six months after they said, all right, you know, we're going to give you a tryout, uh, we'll sign you to a contract but you'll be, you know, in our minor leagues in Louisville, Kentucky to see if you can make it to the to the main roster. Uh, about six months into that, they made a decree that 6'2 or higher or you won't, you can't even get a tryout. Doesn't out. matter. Yeah, it didn't even matter what you are who you were or what you knew. Or Why'd they go like. with 6'2"? Because they I just, I just, I just remember here, massive in the ring or whatever? I think, yeah, and it is, uh, you know, it's WWE. It's larger than life at the time. This is 15 years ago. Right. And they wanted everyone to be, you know, big, giant uh, superstars. Yeah. And, uh, you know, now we've, we've, we've become these renaissance men and women that could, you know, our cardio and stamina shape and muscly and can flip and can dive right. and can catch the diving people and can talk and like can go the talk ultimate warrior and, and, back in the day right yeah. I mean was he one of the only dudes right in Jimmy yeah. Superfly Snooker oh, these guys were athletic and muscular like everybody is now right yeah it's uh it's a lot of um it's a lot of training that goes into it and being loose in the ring and you could be all of those things and still you know not make it because it is like showbiz right if it doesn't work out it doesn't work out so uh, luckily, because of I think people knowing the hard work that I did, uh, people got behind me even when I wasn't really doing too much. All right, so you get to try. You get they they're like we like this dude. Let's what sign him, uh, and yeah, then so, who makes your character? Like how do they give you uh, the storyline? You they go hey man go train and learn how to do this for six months, and then you'll slowly start developing a character. Oh, they'll figure out promo classes, and you kind of pitch some things, and they pitch some things, but. Uh, I mean, I, I thought of all these different things. I, I actually even pitched a long time ago as like a, a Nick Winters from like uh, Bill Murray on Saturday Night Live, like yeah. a lounge singer, like okay. comic. But, but that was a time where you were pitching crazy characters. Now it's more, it's very real and you're uh, this guy, you know, people know me not as some, not as a caddy or a, a cheerleader as I, actually one of the characters I was. They just know me as like, oh, he's a guy who works hard and is awesome at his job, but always almost wins the big one. Like you become like these real life characters yeah. because you're, you know, half of you or more is is invested in this. But at the time, you're pitching crazy stuff to get noticed and uh, just working on falling down and tucking your chin and trying to be smooth as smooth and loose as you can be. Because even someone like me who was a fan 
and picked it up quickly was so used to like not showing emotion in amateur wrestling. You break your arm in a match, you don't let anyone know about it, you know, and here yeah, it's, how, now has that happened? Did that happen to you? I've had my shoulder go out before oh in college God. and you just had to like bite down on your teeth and get through the match and because the, 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 your opponent knew they could kind of just kind of go with it so yeah. you know, or you'd have to stop the match or something. So you got to this point where you got to learn to let everybody see what you're doing because you're, you know, performing. I've never seen them stop a match though. Uh, really? It happens. It does? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They just time out? No, it's, it, I mean, <laughs> if somebody gets uh, busted, it's almost, it's almost along the lines of MMA, like to where if someone's knocked out or oh, blood's okay, okay. Yeah, somewhere, okay, okay. Or something like that, they'll stop it just to check, you know, to make sure you can still All continue. All right, so, so now you go through the six months of training, you come out. Is that your rival in town, Captain Bob? Yeah. <laughs> that guy, I tell you right now, I don't know. I'm uh, this guy's an guy. imposter, I yeah. think. We just passed a truck that's like, this guy is like, does fire cleanup for like emergencies. Yes. But he's smoking like chain smoking cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> like, Welcome to Florida. Welcome to Florida. creating the problem so yes. that he can solve it. It's an inside job. Yeah, I like that. Uh, Guarantees sorry. he always and has work. Oh, there he is. There he is. Really? By a service. service He's smoking. <laughs> man picking his nose. Yay. So you get the, so yeah. six months, did you, did you learn, obviously you learned a crap load during those six months, but how yeah. did you feel athletically? Like, were they, were they doing way more training than you normally did? Or? No, I, I feel like I've had uh, the stamina I've had from, I went to a pretty cool, uh, pretty awesome high school, St. Ed's, and uh, there in, in Cleveland, Ohio, where we were push to be in the best possible shape all year round to wrestle and do other sports yeah. to where I feel like I kept that with me my whole life because I never right. stopped training like that so uh, we had a you know it was like five days a week we'd have something but I wanted I was coming in not from doing the independence not from having any prior experience and I wanted to learn as much as possible so I was coming in early in the morning with a friend of mine and he was training me the basics. So you were putting in extra then hours. I, yeah, then I would do our normal class then everyone would go home and I'd come back at night and work on it with a different coach just so I could put three years into six months of just trying to get as awesome as I could and that's I've been doing that ever since. And then does Vince just come down and be like, okay, let's get this guy going, uh, he's ready to go. I How is that? There's, like you, there's you in between. Yeah, I mean, meeting him was a crazy thing and it took a while. Yeah, I was like eight, ten months in before I even met him but because there's so many in between. Do they pay you during that time? Uh, uh, sometimes yes, sometimes no. I was under contract, so I was being paid, um, so I wouldn't have to get a side job. And so did was, you have this long, sexy hair at the time, or did uh, you start growing? I had up? a military flat top for oh, like twenty five wow. years. Okay, yeah. okay. And uh, at, and uh, once I did a character as I came up as a caddy and a cheerleader, and once those were over with, then I started growing my hair out to just do something to have a different look. Yeah, you know? yeah. And meeting Vince, like, do they? Do, is it like he flies in in his private jet and like, okay, you're going to meet Vince right I mean, now? That, I mean, <laughs> that, that might have <laughs> happened in some other eras or times, something, but I was I was called up to uh, our Monday Night Raw, our TV show, and I okay. was called up to just go meet him in between him getting ready for the show and getting were you, everything done. Were you on the bill that night? Uh, Is that Did I say the right thing? Uh, sure. On the bill? bill marquee, I know card, nothing about what stuff. I'm saying. It's I'm a card, acting. usually. You know, okay, on the card. It's like a comedy card that you yeah, set up okay, a lineup. Okay, okay. Uh, no, but I was just there to meet and say he, you know, he had an idea for us or something, and uh, that's where we met him. And he was. Uh, Do all the ideas come from him and trickle down, or not? I feel like there's groups and groups of people around him, and he throws ideas out, and they throw them off him. And it's, I mean, he's still the boss, and he runs everything, and he puts his stamp on every little piece that happens. But there's some people around him that he, you know, he asks for ideas and tries things out, or uh, the talent pitch ideas all the time. Yeah. So. And when you're in a talent, like when you're pitching, okay, so this is the question. You're pitching the fight, do you guys pitch like a match as well, or do those get already set up and then you know what's going to happen? It really depends. If you are good at this or you know what you're doing, uh, you pitch a story or a six month okay. thing of like, here's the idea, and you almost like you're pitching a movie, and then you fit in, here's where this match could go, and here's where this one would be, and then we could lead and build up after three months to a steel cage match, or you, you tell the story where there's ups and downs, and you hope that they take it and use it, and sometimes it's modified, sometimes it's totally different, but uh, the idea is to always give those ideas in there just in case you're doing something you don't want to do. You go, here's these 20 other options I have. What do you think? And yeah. maybe they'll still go with their idea, but you never know. What about the sportsmanship, like, between the different wrestlers? Like, you know, like, in 
in different sports, they respect the opponent, but they also usually hate them. Like I was, a, I played baseball in college. I was the guy that they hated to play against, but they loved to play with. Like, so you have guys at the end, you'll shake their hand, but before the game, like I want to spit on them. Like, uh, how does I, that feel? I don't, I bet, I feel like in the eighties and nineties, it yeah. was more like that. It was a little more wild west kind of, uh, people not knowing, you know, who was trying to screw them over in the ring or something like that, or, you know, take advantage of them or break their arm or something. Right. This is now, this is a, a traveling team family yeah. dynamic to you where guys we're all travel watching on each other's back. Together? You no, but we go city to city, you know, in groups or by ourselves or whatever, but you know that we're out there to put on a great show. That's right. And make it great. So even if someone's being unprofessional, if you are been around long enough and you're good enough, you make up for it by making sure that nothing happens in the ring and you can take care of it backstage yeah. or something like that. And it is a show. I mean, you guys are like world-class entertainers now it's, it's good, amazing yeah, we have a pretty the good level that that's come from right yeah it really it, it did you know in the 80s a lot of sometimes it was a big strong guy who couldn't move right. around too much and sometimes there'd be some small guy flying around but now it's i, I said before it's renaissance men and women you have to be able to talk be funny be cool be serious be able to catch somebody be able to jump off the top rope totally. be strong be constantly be able to go on a media day and do something and go right to a match they and must uh, teach do they teach you like do they give you media kind of skills on how to be like more charismatic they, i mean because this the, the the personas are bigger than life like some of these sure. guys especially and, you yeah it's sometimes that's the case and sometimes there's classes and now they have nxt which is this world class entire like arena of their own to have to train with you know people working on the microphone and people working on characters and people working on the wrestling and it's just amazing facility that they have now but uh they in must the also past, incorporate like gymnastics kind of moves or whatever right i, I remember, mean yeah, when I you was don't first, learn that stuff just yeah. hanging out like how yeah. do you know because i went on the ring once and i banged off the who ring who let you in the ring <laughs> in the in the boston garden oh my god and i was in the ring sold out it was sold out, yeah. I was given like one of these there kind of things, you know. I wanted to hit the fans. Yeah. I bounced off the ropes. I was like, damn, that thing didn't move. Yeah, that was What a is up with that? It's a, people think those ropes are like sprint, like yeah, they are not very movable. It's a tight rope. Tight also, as hell. You're bouncing off it. We need to have someone like the Big Show who's 500 pounds be able to bounce off it right. also. So, and you know, without snapping or breaking. It's so like it's a steel cool. guard. I was like, that is not what I imagined. When you're first getting into it and you're hitting the ropes a bunch of times a day, you eventually develop like this big patch of bruise and callus down I your can side imagine. to where you get used to it after a couple months, but it takes a little bit. Because uh, what's the tension on those things? It's always the same, really, right? Really, yeah, it depends. It, sometimes they... it's a traveling thing, so sometimes like, hey guys, watch it, the ropes are a little bit loose tonight, or hey, can you tighten them up, we can fix them, but for the most part, it's very similar all the way through, and you get used to it and you know it, or if you're a pro, when you go out there during your entrance, you kind of give a little, little tug just to let yeah, them know where yeah. they are. Just so so you feel know it, so you get an idea. All, so you always know where you are and what's Were going you on. surprised when you hit the rope that they weren't like Oh, as, sure. I didn't know when anything was... I, I hit the anything. rope, and I was like, what the hell? Yeah. It felt like a wall. Yeah. Like, was, I was like, no, this is not move. I was kind of barely hitting it, and I'm not a bigger guy, so it, I don't think it moved an inch. Yeah, it's pretty... It's a, I was shocked. Then you get used to it to where you, go, you know you got to pop into them so you can pop out of there and go into something so you I mean that's just one of the million things that you got to learn and that's what we're constantly telling people don't try this at home or like the backyard stuff because people can get hurt really bad and like even a fan like me who was training for months I don't know everything I'm learning something new every day and it's been 15 years you know that's amazing so when did you decide you were going to be a stand-up comic I mean uh, you had a passion for it you told me like you started yeah. out kind of thinking that almost was your character at the beginning yeah well, that's, that's something I tried just something for I want to say for 15 years or so I've been filling up notebooks with just you know not just wrestling stuff because I have a weird job and you bump into crazy people and you're constantly in airports and living a weird life but just constantly you know I'm someone who is annoyed by everybody all day long every little thing that happens to me so I was writing down things about happening at work but mostly like I'm at Chipotle and someone cut me in line or someone did something different and yeah. it's like this is the this is the stand-up comedy part where your real life that's driving you insane and it's like the wrestling part was keeping me sane right. and keeping me that I can get off my aggression but filling up the notebooks and constantly you know running ideas by people and just looking up to comics my whole life and like someone like Andy Kaufman to where he did a little bit you know uh, of comedy and yep. wrestling yep. and was a genius about it and you and I read books about him and I go this is very interesting and then you find a way to where you can not trick people but where you can make it more real than other people can and you can blur lines and 
and when people aren't sure if this is part of the show or if this is real, it becomes an art. And then longevity. Like, you can obviously be a stand-up comic a hell of a lot longer than you can run around in this ring. I mean, that, that is got to be taxing on your body, right? It, it really Sarah, is, Sarah, me yeah. and you getting in the ring, right? Imagine? Damn. No way. I feel like Sarah would be good. Yeah? Yeah. In yeah, the ring? She probably, yeah. she probably has yeah, a good... No, the ring's not in order for like, me in any elbow way. Elbow drop or something. Don't you, don't you feel like punching me all the time? Yeah, I do punch well, you, but not even in the ring. But see, if you did in the ring, it'd be worth so much more money. You should punch up your jokes. <laughs> oh, Sarah. <laughs> That's no, your great. Your jokes That's are good. Great. Everybody should see that. Like, well, we're going to see you tonight at Off The Hook Comedy Club, yeah, 7 yeah. o'clock. Yeah. There's a meet and greet at 6 o'clock. You can get yes. tickets for it, offthehookcomedy.com. Uh, and you guys, if you're a family or there's some little kids and you're not allowed into the club that's right. uh, during the show, that's why we do the meet and greet ahead of time at 6 o'clock. Yes. So we can have some kids and have, because I always have people reaching out and I have these little kids, I have my family with me, they want to do this, come to 6 o'clock, we'll do the VIP meet and greet and then we'll get to the show. And you get first dibs at merch if you come to the VIP meet. Oh, oh what kind of merch do we have? I'm well, wearing a shirt right now. Oh, oh this is the hey. DZ, Sarah, Tiana, yeah, I, Rock and Roll Cupcake it. one. I love it. Yeah. And we have yes. shirts and hats, and uh, it's it's really cool because uh, with WWE, I don't have a lot of cool merchandise, so mm -hmm. I went out and made my own. And Good. It's yeah. my favorite stuff, and my fans dig it, and I dig it, and that's the most important part. That's the way to go, because then you get to meet. If people feel more uh, like they're satisfied. They got the whole package when they get merch and everything. Yeah, it's show. cool. Yeah, it's, it, it shows that you're really not just you know going to WWE shows. You're coming to the Say hello, and uh, we'll be back tomorrow. I got J 